Good morning, everybody. Sabah al-Khair jami'an. It's great to see you again today on our second day of Unbound, Bahrain. Yesterday, we talked about stories. And what a lovely day to start with Kareem's story, one of the biggest startups in Middle East. And we have with us uh, our brother Khaled from, uh, uh, he's the GM of uh, GCC for Kareem. How are you, Khaled, today? I'm great, thanks. Thanks for the, uh, for the great introduction, Ali. It's uh, always great uh, to be uh, in Bahrain. And thank you for having such a lovely event and such a, such a great venue. It's, uh, it's great to be here. Thank you very much. So tell us about Kareem. What is Kareem and uh, what does Kareem do? So Kareem started in uh, 2012 when two uh, McKinsey management consultants decided to quit their jobs and start something that was meaningful. Uh, Magnus Olsen, our first uh, co-founder, had just uh, recovered from a serious brain surgery and wanted to actually do something that impacted the lives of people in a, and, and simplified them. Mudassir Sheikha, our second co-founder, had spent a lot of time in the Silicon Valley area in the US uh, with the startup industry and wanted to uh, bring some of that uh, startup culture back to the region. Mm. And he also wanted to create uh, an institution that inspired. Um, and this is how Kareem was born. In, in 2014, it reached new heights when they were joined by our third founder, uh, Dr. Abdullah uh, Elias, who is a Saudi German a serial entrepreneur. He also had spent a, a valuable amount of time uh, in, in, in different industries and wanted to come back to the region and bring back something that had a big positive impact. So okay. this is how Kareem was, was born, a, a brand that really had a mission to simplify the lives of people and create an awesome organization that inspires. Great. So, so Kareem is an app, is it a website? What does it do? So Kareem uh, is actually a uh, started off as a ride hailing service, and as you know, you we went along. We started discovering that there are different things that we wanted to do, um, and you know, there's different things that we wanted to get into the future. But it started off uh, by uh, looking at a, a big uh, uh, problem, which was at that time trying to. Uh, figure out mobility and trying to find a solution for this, and we uh, expanded into different areas. Very good, very nice. Okay, uh, who are your main competitors? So, competition is very healthy, uh, especially for uh, a new industry like ours, the ride hailing industry. Uh, we welcome competition, whether it's uh, local or international. Mm. Um, as one of the, the main uh, values that we focus on is we focus on providing a quality service to our customers. We focus on addressing the local market needs in the markets that we operate in. And we focus on having a very positive impact on our customers and our captains. With these values, we are able to actually uh, differentiate and reach the results that we require to do. Very good. So your app is very important uh, today for many people. I mean, you said about differentiation and uh, values. Can you tell us? What did you solve? I mean, uh, there was a case. That's why, you know, uh, Kareem was invented and, and created. Sure. So did you help people? I mean, how many people really used uh, Kareem? What was, you know, the outcomes and the results? So really, uh, Kareem started because we saw that there was an opportunity to address the need to, for improved mobility in the Middle East. Uh, you know, today, uh, over 30 million customers are using uh, us across the Kareem footprint, mm. and uh, it, it is solving uh, a, a big uh, gap and, and helping also uh, in terms of enhancing the mobility in many different areas that we have in the Middle East region. But it's also a, a, a very big job creation engine. Job and, creation. And, uh, you know, we've celebrated a couple of months ago a big milestone that we really were striving to achieve, which was the creation of one million uh, captain jobs wow. across our footprint. One million? Yes. In how many countries? This is across our Kareem footprint, which is currently standing at 16 countries. 16 countries with one million jobs. Yes. That's a great number of jobs created by Kareem. I think it's deserved applause. Thank you. 
So Karim is scaling up fast. And we earlier talked about Uber and talked about tech investors. So how, who's funding Karim? So, you know, today we have uh, several, uh, you know, investors that, uh, you know, are part of the Kareem journey, part of the Kareem mission. Uh, and there's, there's a, a big range uh, of them and, and they, they see the massive potential. They see that this region has a lot of massive potential. Okay. And they see that obviously since we started our journey, we've grown uh, quite fast and they still see that there's a lot more potential in the region. I see. Very good. Very good. Um, are you going uh, to open in other countries like Far East or States? Or, because you said 16 countries. Mm -hmm. What is your milestones? What is your plan in 2019 and 2020? So we still have quite a lot of cities and areas that we still are focusing on growing in our current footprint. So we are still looking at markets in Northern Africa. Okay. And this is just purely ride hailing business. If you look at the three main areas that Kareem is going into in the next uh, year or so, uh, we have, the first area that we have is the uh, food delivery business. And in 2018, mm. we acquired a company uh, called Run Menu with the objective of understanding the food delivery business and learning as much from it so that when we launch our own service, we're okay. able to actually hit the ground running. And we did so. We launched our, uh, our Kareem Now app, which is now available in, in Dubai, and it's rolling out several cities. What does it call? Kareem, Kareem Now. Kareem Now. Yeah. So Kareem Now is a food delivery app. Yes. That's nice. Yeah. Good. Second area that we're going into mm. is uh, mass transportation. And we have recently launched a very interesting project in Cairo called Kareem Bus. Kareem Bus. And today, if you look at Cairo, an average person in Cairo spends about 50 hours a month in traffic. 60% of rides in Cairo have just one person in the ride. 40% of people don't have adequate access to public transport. Mm. So hopefully by launching Kareem Bus, we can help alleviate uh, and reduce some of the congestion problems that we have uh, in Cairo. And if you think of it in the sense that one bus is potentially 13 less cars on the road, potentially freeing up 13 car parking spaces and a bit under 13's worth of CO2 emissions they reduce. And that's just the impact with one bus. So you can imagine by having a multitude of buses, how we can really help a city like Cairo improve its mobility. Amazing, amazing. Third area that we're going into is uh, we have recently launched a peer-to-peer prepaid closed loop uh, credit transfer service, which allows customers to send Kareem credit from one app to the other. Ah, okay. And this credit can be used for rides mm -hmm. uh, uh, anywhere, pretty much in the, in the Kareem footprint. And uh, what this does today is effectively really help customers have more freedom, more flexibility in terms of uh, uh, taking our rides. But more importantly is today in the Middle East, only 14% of people have a bank account. Okay. That's actually a, a, a big opportunity in the sense that for everybody else, they don't have a secure way of storing and transferring and moving cash. So with the advent of mobile phones and smartphones, this actually uh, presents itself as a huge opportunity for us to get uh, to offer people uh, in the future uh, a digital wallet and a mobile payment system. Amazing, amazing. I know Khalid, you are ex Zane and you have a background of telecom, so you are very familiar with digital and this. And I think yesterday everybody talked about startups and technology uh, has to go, you know, side by side. And how much technology you use in Karim? I know it's an app, but with all these numbers and facts, you know, how much analysis you guys do to create new services? So technology is at the core of everything that we do. Mm. And uh, we use uh, the latest state-of-the-art artificial intelligence to try and innovate as much as possible, to try and help us provide the best uh, technology to our captains and to our customers. Um, you know, we've invested $100 million worth of R&D in our tech hubs, which wow. are in Berlin, in Germany, mm. in Pakistan, and in Dubai to try and not only uh, get the best uh, technology to our customers and captains, but also 
to create a destination for all the tech talent that we have in the Middle East to try as much as possible to attract it and provide it with a, a destination where they can actually excel and innovate and, and, and do their best. Uh, and I think that's you know, one of the, the, the big leaps that we've done in terms of, uh, of technology with our Amazing. three technology hubs that we have in those Amazing. cities. I think Kareem could be a case study for startups who would like really to scale it up and go big because you, you have a very nice story to tell uh, how really a startup should be when you have a good investment and where you are going. So tell me, what is the ultimate goal of Kareem? Where you are heading? So our, our boldest initiative now comes in the form of becoming the internet e-commerce platform of the region. Uh, while growing Kareem, we've spent a substantial amount of time and resources on building a platform that can run a large consumer internet e-commerce business at scale. And we are right now in the process of platformi platformizing it, where we will start uh, opening up this platform and allowing other third-party e-commerce internet uh, partners to plug in and utilize the features of this platform so that when they launch their services, they're able to do so at a faster pace mm -hmm. and they're able to scale up significantly. Nice, pace. nice. Is there any co collaboration between Kareem and startups? I mean, are you acquiring, you said you acquired an app, a delivery app. Correct. Or, so are you doing more of these things that startups, because again, this event is all about startups, and I think startups have to start to going to a giant startups absolutely, like you. Absolutely. So we're, we're, you know, we continuously are, have uh, open ears and, and have discussions uh, with uh, startups, and not just, you know, as you mentioned, for potentials of acquisition, but also potentials of mentorship and helping out and, and doing the best that we can to inspire and nice. become a, 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 a startup that also acts as a, a, an inspiration and has a positive impact for other startups in the region. And so, you know, in the Middle East, we have always, or most of the time, we have always imported uh, technology. I think now is the time for us to start building that technology that, that our region needs, mm -hmm. and maybe in the future exporting it uh, to the Very outside good. world. Very good. So uh, we have less than two minutes. Tell us what's tendering now? What's the new tender happening in the business, especially for startups? If, because a lot of youth would like to create their startups. What, what do you recommend to them? What do you suggest? Like a last advice from you to so, the, the uh, youngest startups. I, I, start, you know, we understand that uh, there's so many opportunities. And I think uh, uh, it's very important to identify a, a how to solve a big problem with a big idea. Okay. And once you do that, it's very important to keep working hard and, and building your big idea and measuring everything that you do as you go along. Mm -hmm. And also, to, if, you, if you have investors, always going back to them and convincing them of the big idea and how big this opportunity is. But ultimately, what is very, very important is to always have a purpose. True. So having a purpose for any entrepreneur, having a purpose in, in your startup really is, is what makes it for most organizations. Amazing. I went through your uh, social media accounts and there was like account for every country. Is that in purpose to serve and help your customers in every uh, segment area? Absolutely. We try to be as, as local and as present. And as I said, we, we always understand the local market needs. Mm -hmm. and, and every market has different uh, needs and requirements. And hence, it's so important for us to actually be in every market as Karim Bahrain or Karim yeah. Kuwait or you know, uh, any other country. So yes, we do have a social media account dedicated for every single country that we're in. Uh, because that's part of how we actually address the current local market needs. Amazing. If startups would like to contact Kareem, where they have to contact? Through social media or there is a website or? So we are uh, you know, always happy to, to hear from anyone. I mean, I'm happy to, uh, to hear from anyone if uh, they'd like to approach us and, and discuss any potential partnership opportunities. Uh, we're all open ears, uh, definitely. Khaled, thank you very much. Thank we learned you, a lot from Karim, and thank you very much, everybody. Thank and you. you have a long day today. Please don't forget to tell your story as well through the hashtag and Bahrain. So see you again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.